So ex modeling exponential growth and decay is the title of these notes, and this section kind of ties everything together. So let me remind you where we've been. When we first started working with exponential functions, we started out with one that looked like this. Y equals A times B to the X. And then we graduated to where we, we worked, can you see that? We worked with um, A equals P times 1 plus R divided by N to the NT power. You remember that one? This one we use any time we are trying to calculate interest. Compounded quarterly, monthly, <coughs> daily, semi-annually. Um, and then we said there's a formula that can use if interest is compounded continuously all the time, constantly, then we use this formula. A equals P times E to the RT power. So I think we did this last time. We said, on this set of notes, exponential and growth, uh, exponential growth and decay functions, we're using something, that, we're using a formula that looks like A equals A sub zero, often you read it A naught, times E to the K times T. And we compared this formula to A equals e, um, P times E to the RT power. And in both cases, I think we talked about this, they're really the same formula. They use different letters, but they're the same formula. And in both cases, A naught and P represents the original amount of something. When we're, when we're talking about money, in this one we're growing money. Or in, in this one we might be growing or decaying something other than money. So it's just kind of a, if we're talking about money, we usually use P for principal. If we're talking about other things, we usually use A and A naught, A sub zero. So in this example, we said, in 1990, the population of Africa was 643 million, and by the year 2000, it had grown to 813 million. That's pretty good growth when we're talking um, over a million more people. That's, that's a lot. So the population depends on the year. So we wrote, if the dependent variable is always supposed to be the y variable, we wrote it like this. In the year 1990, the population was 643 million. In the year 2000, the population was 813 million. And we said oftentimes, instead of having to graph 1,990 on the x-axis, we call this time zero, and we call this one 10 years after 1990, it'll be time 10. So, <clears throat> when we first started talking about exponential equations, we didn't do this last time, but I want you to do it. If I told you to write an exponential equation the way we first learned how to do it, you would plug both of these into, I'm going to use a different color, you would plug both of these into f of x equals a times b to the x. And then, this is x, and this is f of x. So we plugged both of these in, and we had 643 equals, we didn't know A, and we didn't know B, but we knew X was 0. Do you all remember this? Mm -hmm. We did this before. And if we plugged the other one in, we would have 813 equals, we don't know A, we don't know B, but we do know X is 10. So we wrote the equation of an exponential function, and we needed to solve for A and B. And in order to solve for A and B, we had to form a quotient. Remember how we did this? It looked like a proportion. So we said AB to the 10th compares to AB to the 0, biggest exponent on top, the same way A13 compares to 643. We didn't do this last time, so do this with me. What do we have to do? A divided by A goes away. B to the 10th divided by B to the 0. We have B to the 10th power equals whatever we get when we do A13 divided by 643. I have b to the tenth. How do I get b? Tenth root or, or the tenth root is the same thing as the one tenth power. So type this into your calculator. Type in 813 divided by 643 and raise it to the one tenth power and see if you agree with me that b is equal to uh, approximately 1.023735. Do you agree? Yes. After you have B, what do you do? Plug it 
plug it back in. So if we plug it back in, we usually go to the smallest exponent. That's, so then that would mean that we have 643 equals A times all of this, 1.023735 raised to the zero power. What's any number to the zero power? One. So I really have 643 equals A times one. So one times A is just A. 643 is A. After you know A and B, then you go back and write an equation. So the equation is this. F of X equals multiplier A, 643, times base B, 1.023735 raised to the X. This is one way of writing the exponential equation. There's another way to write an exponential equation, and then we're going to discuss in a minute to see if those, those equations mean the same thing. So, what we did last time on this one was, we were writing an exponential equation starting with this formula. So we started out with A equals A naught times E to the KT power. <coughs> And we said, we have an original population of 643, and we have a population after time of 813. So 813 equals 643 times e to the, we didn't know k, but we knew t was 10 years. So we said, this is an exponential equation. We know this because when we look in the exponent spot, we see a variable. If we solve for k, K will give us the growth or decay rate, and actually it's going to be a growth rate. So we've got to isolate the base. We divide both sides by 643. You see some similarities between the two. And so this goes away. And then we can't solve this using like bases because we're not going to get a like base for 813 over 643 and at E, 2.718, and so on, so on. So we've got three ways to solve exponential equations. One, like basis, not going to work. Two, trial and error, that's tedious. Or three, take a log, or in this case, a natural log of both sides. So we said, well, let's do natural log of 813 over 643. Then that means we also have to do a natural log of e to the k times 10, or I'm going to call it 10k. And then right here, you got to remember what happens with natural log e. Cancels out. Yeah, because that <coughs> means log base e of e to the 10k, so base of the log and base of the argument are the same, so the value of the whole thing is just equal to the exponent. So you have a number on your calculator that just equals 10k. And then to solve for k, you got to divide both sides by 10. So did you retype that into your calculator, and I think we came up with k was 0 .023. Is that right? Something we didn't talk about or I didn't remind you about again, when you use this form, A times B to the X, you can tell if it's exponential growth or decay by looking at B. If B is bigger than 1, it's growth. If it's exactly 1, it's a flat line. It's neither growth nor decay. If the base is <coughs> negative, it's not growth or decay because you're going from a negative to a positive to a negative to a positive. But if the base is a fraction between 0 and 1, it's decay. So, and from here, we can look at the base and we can, get, we can go, hey, this base is bigger than 1, it's growth. In this problem, k tells us because k is positive, it's growth, and because it, any time k is negative, it's decay. So when we were comparing these formulas over here, r represented an interest rate, And in this formula, K represents either a growth rate or a decay rate. And you're going to know that it's growth if it's positive, and you're going to know that it's decay if it's negative. So now that I know I have a positive K value, I know that I have growth going on, which I already knew anyway, growing from 643 to 813. We expected a positive K value. When we plug it back in, and we do what we're supposed to do on this one, it says find the exponential growth function, that's another way of saying to you, write an equation, here's what the equation looks like. The amount, the population after time is equal to the original population, which we know was 643 million, 
times e raised to the exponent of 0 0.023 k times t. So we wrote a formula. And now that we have this formula, we can use it to answer any other questions that come up, like on letter B. It said, by which year will Africa's population reach 2,000 million? We talked about this last time. 2,000 million is kind of a weird way to say it. But this equation that we wrote, that we wrote represents population in millions. So if we just said, when's the population going to be reached 2 billion? We're tempting to just put a 2 in. But that would be 2 million if you plug in a 2. So 2,000 million is six zeros. So if you have 2,000 million, nine zeros is a billion. 2,000 million is the same thing as two billion. So we said to answer the question on part B, we plug in 2,000 million. 2,000 equals 643 times e to the 0.023t. Then we divide both sides by 643 and take a natural log of both sides. And when you take a natural log of both sides, natural log of e to the 0.023t, then natural log of e, or inverse functions, they undo each other. Log base e of e to the exponent just leaves us with the exponent. So you have some number on your calculator that equals 0 0.023 times t. What did we get? And then we had to divide both sides by 0 0.023. I think we did this one last time. Check it again. Type natural log 2000 divided by 643. That will give you an answer. And then divide it by 0 0.023. Tell me what we got for t. So we said about 49 years. The question said, when is the population of Africa, Africa going to reach 2,000 million or 2 billion? Well, that happens when T is 49.3 years, and T is the number of years since 1990. By which year? Well, the population will reach 2 billion, 49.3 years after 1990, so we had to decide on this one, 1990 plus 49 years put us in the year 2039. Okay, before we do example two, we're going to kind of go out of order. So jump to the last page of your notes, because here's the question I want us to answer. I want us to decide... We wrote an, ex an equation that was in the form f of x equals a times b to the x. The base was bigger than 1, but I couldn't see a growth rate. And then we also wrote an equation that was 643 times e to the 0.023. So I want us to answer this question. Do these two equations, are they really the same thing? To answer that question, you need to go to the back. Go to the back page of your notes and look at example 4. I'm not going to put it up here, I'm just going to talk about it. So example four on your notes says you have an equation that looks like this. Y equals four times 7.8 to the X. You agree that looks like this form, right? Look at this on example four. Does this equation represent growth or decay? Growth, how do we know? Base is bigger than one. What if I want to write another equation that means the same as this, but I want it to have a base of E instead of a base of 7.8? Let me ask you a question. Do you agree that 7.8 means the same thing as E raised to the natural log of 7.8? Work on this for a minute. If you have E to the natural log of 7.8, E to the natural log of 7.8, it means e to the log base e of 7.8. You remember our, our property? If the base of the log and the base of the argument are equal, I mean base of the exponent and the base of the log are the same, the value of the whole thing is just 7.8.
So I found another <coughs> way to write 7.8. Replace 7.8 with e to the natural log of 7.8. 7.8, though, was still raised to another exponent. And I still keep the 4 multiplier. What do you do if you have one base to a power and then another power? I'm going to turn that back on in a second. You multiply exponents, right? So this would become 4 times e to the natural log 7.8 times x. Go type natural log 7.8 into your calculator. you should get 2.054, do you agree? Mm -hmm. So I can say 4 times e to the 2.054 times x, this equation means the same thing as this equation. I knew this was growth because 7.8 was bigger than 1. Now I know it's growth because e to a positive exponent will give me growth. But the advantage of having it like this is I can now see that the growth rate is, actually I'll have to move the decimal, 205%. I think it was 2.054 times x. So the growth rate is 205%. 7.8 is a, is a big number, so a big growth rate is not a surprise. Let me give you one more. This one's not on your notes. Just I'm just making this one up. What if you have y equals 2 times 1 half to the x? Just from looking at this equation, it's in the form a times b to the x. Would this represent growth or decay? Decay, you know this because the base is less than 1, right? I want us to say this, I want us to write another equation that means the same as this. So how can I say, what other way could I talk about one-half if I use a base of e? Instead of one-half, I could call it e to the natural log of one-half, y. If you had mm -hmm. e to the natural log of one-half, that's the same thing as e to the log base e of one-half, base of the log, base of the, of the exponent are the same. So the value of the whole thing is just one half. So e to the natural log one half means the same thing as one half. I'm going to keep two as the multiplier. But one half was raised to another power, so e to the natural log of one half is still raised to x. When I have a base raised to an exponent, then another exponent, I multiply. So I have two times e to the natural log of one half times x. Type in natural log of one half into your calculator. And I don't have it, so you're going to have to tell me what you get. Negative 0. 0.61314. Negative 0. 0.61314 times x. 6931. 6931, okay. Negative 0. 0.6931 times x. Are you surprised that we got a negative exponent? What does a negative exponent mean? Decay. Decay. What does a, a fraction less than 1 mean? Decay. Okay, so now go back to this equation that we wrote. We wrote two different equations, and my question to you is, are these equations the same thing? So what if I take this equation right here, and I change it to where it has a base of E? What will it look like? If I replace this with a base of E, I'll have to call it E to the what? natural log of 1.023735 times x. Well, it's still going to be raised to the x power, so that's going to be multiply it times x. Type into your calculator natural log of 1.023735. Did it turn into... 0.023. So my point is, the various things that we've talked about, y equals a times b to the x, can really be the same thing as a equals a naught times e to the kt. So a base of e lets you see the growth or decay rate, whereas a base that's not e, this you can tell that it's growth, but you can't see the rate. 
So sometimes it's to your advantage to have a base of E. Okay, now go on to example two.